Hello and welcome to AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be looking at the final modification that I made to my Elenco Regulated Variable Voltage Power Supply Model XP-15. Now in my last modification video, I added a rocker switch to allow me to turn the power supply on and off whenever I wanted to. And we can see that function now, on and off. And I'll post a link to that uh, modification video uh, in the description. So if you want to check out the modification video for installing a rocker switch on the uh, Model XP-15 variable voltage power supply, uh, you can go ahead and check it out. But today we are not going to really be taking that much of a look at the rocker switch. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the digital voltage panel meter that I installed in the bottom of the power supply. And uh, in this video, I'll show you how it works. I'll take the power supply apart and show you how I wired it into the power supply. Uh, and then we'll run a couple tests with it. So stay tuned. And before I turn it on and show you it functioning, let's go ahead and take the power supply apart. So I'm in the power supply right now, and let's go ahead and take a look at the modification. So this modification is fairly easy and very cheap. The digital voltage panel meter itself only costs about $5, uh, and then it's another couple dollars for shipping. And I'll go ahead and post the link to where I got this. I actually bought this on Amazon, and uh, I think it came with free shipping. Uh, free super saver shipping. I'm not a hundred percent sure. That's why I'm going to post the link so you guys can check it out for yourselves. Now the hardest thing about this modification really is just getting the hole drilled out to the right size. You got to measure the uh, the dimensions of the digital voltage panel meter, and then mark them on the back of the case. And as you can see, when I put the case together, um, if I can, give me a second. And as you can see, when I have the case together, the hole is actually a bit bigger than the digital voltage panel meter itself. And that's because the digital voltage panel meter has these little plastic edges all around it that actually go out a little bit. Uh, it's probably maybe two millimeters out uh, from the actual digital voltage panel meter, and these cover up the uh, hole itself. So you can't see any of the hole, you just see the digital voltage panel meter. Now I etched out this hole using a electric drill and as you can see I had a lot of mishaps when doing that. Um, so if you have some sort of saw that can get in and cut a hole this size I would highly suggest using it. Because um, the drill method that I use when I cut out holes and I use the same method uh, oh, there goes a the screw. Uh, I use the same method when installing the rocker switch isn't exactly the most practical thing in the world uh, when it comes to cutting out big holes like this. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, and as you can see, you can have a lot of errors. So I would suggest using a small saw uh, when cutting out the hole for the digital voltage panel meter. Now as far as wiring goes, I soldered the wires for the device directly onto the power supply output posts. Now there are other ways to do this. There are other ways to uh, connect the wires to the power supply and get a reading out of the digital voltage panel meter. But in my opinion, this is the easiest. It's not the safest, um, but it is the most practical and it takes the least amount of time. Now another method that I think I might try uh, is I might go ahead and desolder the positive and negative wires for the uh, power to the digital voltage panel meter and I think I'll go ahead and throw a 9 volt battery in here and I'll connect the, the uh, wires that supply the power to the device uh, to the 9 volt battery and then uh, when I drop the voltage below I think it's like 2.3 volts when the voltage drops below 2.3 volts the device no longer functions uh, but if you have it hooked up to an outside power source, for example, a 9 volt battery, um, it will still function and it will read below that 2.3 volts uh, that the device cuts out at. So all you have to do is leave the, uh, white, the white probing wire hooked up to one of the posts. 
and the device is capable of measuring 0 to 99 volts with an outside power source. So earlier I was talking about how the digital voltage panel meter would cut out after the voltage drops below 2.3 volts. And uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So I have my digital multimeter hooked up and we're going to go ahead and check that out. So I have the power supply at its max at 16.4 volts. I'm going to drop that down. And it should start to get dimmer. The display should start becoming dimmer in just a couple. Yeah, there we go. It actually, uh, well, we're at 2.3 volts right now. And if we go below that, it cuts out completely. And as you can see, the power supply is still outputting uh, the current. But the digital voltage panel meter no longer is showing anything. So drop to zero, get nothing, and then at, let me see. Okay, so we're at 2.1 volts. Yep, and it comes back on at 2.3 volts. Yeah, so that would be one of the advantages of having it hooked up to a external power supply uh, instead of directly onto the posts of the power supply itself um, because if you have it hooked up to a external power supply uh, that has a constant voltage uh, something like a 9 volt battery for example then when the voltage drops below 2.3 volts it will still measure the voltage because it is hooked up to that external power supply in terms of accuracy the uh, digital voltage panel meter on the power supply is actually pretty accurate compared to my uh, digital multimeter. So we'll turn it on now. Uh, get it up to a voltage where the digital voltage panel meter will actually function. Um, it's reading, let me see if I can focus that, it's reading 8.8 .8 volts and this is reading 8.78 .8 volts. And of course uh, this can be less accurate because it has one less decimal place than my multimeter does. Um, but it's still pretty accurate. So we'll bump that up. Uh, multimeter is reading 11.45 volts. And then the digital voltage panel meter is the reading 11.4 vol volts. Uh, I'm in a tongue twist today. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty accurate. And of course, I was talking about the uh, drop at 2.3 volts. Um, but before the drop at 2.3 volts, it still reads I mean, the same amount of accuracy, 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts. Let's uh, drop it lower and see if, we, see if we still get an accurate rating. reading. 2.2 uh, volts? Ah, uh, that's more of uh, 2.3 volts right there. So that might be a effect of the uh, low power that the digital voltage panel meter is receiving. Um, but if we crank it up just a bit, get 2.6 volts. 2.6 volts. So all in all, the digital voltage panel meter is pretty accurate to compare to my digital multimeter. Now let's see if something drawing current from the power supply has any effect on the digital voltage panel meter. So this is a 380 size carbon brush motor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set the voltage to zero. The motor is no longer running. And uh, actually I have to go ahead and hook up my multimeter to the digital voltage panel meter to use as a constant. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will be back in just a sec. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin our test. I'll go ahead and crank the output voltage to 4.2 volts. Now it's reading 4.3 volts and let's see what the multimeter reads. I right, know what, I have it set to measure current. Let's go ahead and set that to voltage. And our multimeter right now is reading 4.2 volts, 4.26 volts to be exact. So uh, even with current being drawn from the power supply, the digital voltage panel meter is still accurate. 
So my hand was actually blocking the uh, digital voltage panel meter last time and I didn't notice it. Um, so I'll go ahead and run the test one more time. This time so you can see the digital, both the digital multimeter and the digital voltage panel meter. So this time I'll crank the voltage up to 5.7 volts, 5.6 volts right now. And there you go, the multimeter is reading 5.63 volts. So the digital voltage panel meter on the power supply is indeed still accurate, even with current being drawn from the power supply. Alright, so that concludes the video of the digital voltage panel meter modification that I made to my Lenko Regulated Variable Voltage Power Supply Model XP-15. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post your comment in the comments section of this video. Please don't forget to like this video and please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next video on AA Computers and Technology.